today's video is 21 farmhouse style easy pumpkin DIYs. There's some dupes in there and there's some Dollar Tree DIYs in there. I think you're going to really enjoy it and get some inspiration. These are all of my favorites and I kept adding to the video. So it became kind of a pumpkin palooza video <laughs> and, um, disregard any of the DIY numbers on there because they were from previous videos. There's 21 in total. I hope you enjoy it and get some inspiration. And also this video is part of the pumpkin party challenge playlist. It's hosted by my friends, Ellie from DIY from house to home, Tammy from happiness created. And the guest host is C from CJ DIY. The links to their channels as well as the playlist is going to be listed below. Now, Let's get on to the video. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. Starting off with DIY number one and number two, I'm tracing out this pumpkin shape onto some scrapbook paper. And here's the key. I put the paper face down and I put the pumpkin shape face down on top of it. So that way when I trace it out and then I go back to cut it out, it's going to be the right orientation. I guess that's the word. I mean, it's all, it's all going to be the right way, especially like if I was doing the stem, I would want to make sure that they're both facing the right way. Now for the opposite side, I'm using this plaid paper also from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just pressing down to get an outline of that raised part of that pumpkin. Just want to be able to be able to see where I press down later to be able to cut it. And so as you can see, as I flip it over, you can see where it's indented and I'm just taking some scissors and cutting around and I'm going to be cutting out those three individual pieces because I'm going to be Mod Podging them on later. And then I'm taking some, it's either teal or aqua. I can't remember which color exactly. Sorry y'all, but I'm just going to be painting that in between those raised shapes on the pumpkin. And then while I've got the paint out, <laughs> I had this little square that I got from Dollar Tree. It came in a pack of, I think, five or six. And it's actually kind of a thicker piece of wood. Um, so it's a little more substantial. Anyway, doesn't really matter, though, for what I'm using it for. As you can see, Captain's in the corner. But I'm just giving it a paint, uh, coat of paint on the front because that's all you're going to see. And then I'm putting a very thin layer of Mod Podge onto the raised parts of the pumpkin. And the key here is to do a very thin layer of Mod Podge and then gently press down your scrapbook paper. Now, this scrapbook paper is also, well, I mean, it feels like it's a little on the thicker side, so that's helping it not bubble up or wrinkle or anything like that. But as you can see, I'm putting another thin layer of Mod Podge on top to seal it. And then I have this happy fall wood cutout, word cutout thing. And I am just taking some Waverly Wax in the color antique and I'm painting it on. And in a bit, I will take a damp cloth and wipe off the excess. I didn't feel like you could really see the letters. So I'm just taking a white paint pen and kind of not really distressing it and not really outlining it necessarily, but kind of outlining it. So to give the letters some more dimension and hopefully make them stand out a little bit more. I'm using a paintbrush to apply a thin layer, thin coat of Mod Podge. And it doesn't matter if you use the matte or glossy because we're going to be applying that scrapbook paper on top of it and just pressing down. This is a double sided sign. So on the back, it's going to have the words happy fall again, just like I'm on each side, it's going to say happy fall. So I'm taking my white paint pen and just trying to highlight those letters a little bit, give it a little bit more dimension. So they stand out. Now the Mod Podge has dried and I'm just taking my little finger sander and I'm going over the edges and just kind of sanding downward so that way the excess paper just kind of peels off. It gives it a really nice, it, it gives what I consider a nice clean edge and because you know it didn't cut it perfectly. <laughs> so this helps it, it look a little bit neater on my sign. Now I am going to be making a simple bow and this is 
a Hawaiian skirt. It's from the summertime. I haven't really seen any of the Hawaiian skirts lately in the stores, but if you do, grab it because I like using this better than raffia because I just think, or is it raffia? Raffia, raffia, I don't know. Anyway, I like using this better just because I feel like it, it's easier to work with. And of course, you can see Socks is interested. Now I'm taking, I took, cut some thin strips of that same scrapbook paper and I'm putting it all around the edges. And I have both brothers helping me. Socks is on the left, Captain's on the right. Anyway, so I thought I left enough space all the way around so that you could see some of that aqua color on the edge. But then when I laid it on the that pumpkin there, it just all blends in together. If you see on that sign right there, you just really can't tell that there's like a, I mean, you can tell there's a sign on top, but it's, I don't know. I just, it needs to stand up more. We'll worry about that in a minute. Right now I'm taking some thumbtacks. You can get these at Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting off the pointy part because I'm going to use those as like little embellishments for this little square sign that's in the middle. And here I'm trying to show you the part I cut off. You can't really see it, but I tried. <laughs> I'm going to use my finger sander again to kind of rough up the head of that thumbtack because I'm going to be painting it in a minute and I think that will help the paint adhere a little bit better. Here's a little trick for you. Take some masking tape and place it sticky side up and then I used two pieces of tape on each end to hold it down and then I put my thumbtacks on there. You can put beads and stuff like that on there and it holds it in place while you're trying to paint it. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking some Mod Podge because I want to give it kind of a layer for the paint to, an additional like layer for the paint to grip to. And I'm taking some brown paint. I think it's nutmeg. It's probably nutmeg. I don't know. It's just brown paint though. It's not really going to matter because I'm painting another color on top. And I couldn't find my bronze color so I'm using gold and I'm hoping the brown and the gold kind of blend a little bit and make it look kind of bronzish. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. Now back to that square. It just wasn't popping enough for me, so I'm just taking some folk art paint, and I think it's the color black or something like that, and I'm going all the way around the edges, and I'm going along that little strip, that thin strip that I, see? See where I'm gonna, that's where I'm painting. <laughs> Y'all can see where I'm painting. Anyway, I think that's gonna help it pop a little bit more. Now this is the part where I am adding twine to the stem. And I thought to myself, I don't know, maybe I had too much time on my hands that day, but I thought to wind it kind of up and down through the little hole, hanger hole there. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, this is really not necessary. It didn't really help it look any more finished than just wrapping it around regular. So. If it were me and I was doing this again, I would just skip that part. <laughs> so you can see what I was talking about winding it around at the top and then I'm going back in and now I'm going to wind it around it and I'm just hot gluing as I go so that it all stays in place and I'm just winding it around to the top. And for this side I'm taking that square that I painted and did all the other stuff too and I'm hot gluing it to the center. And then I'm going to hot glue down the happy fall words that I use that Waverly wax on to the center of the little sign. I'm using my hot glue gun to add a little dab of hot glue, a little dollop of hot glue in the corner there. And I'm trying to push the thumbtack in because there's like a little bit of a stem to it. So I'm just trying to push it down, but I'm putting it in the corners. You can't really see it, but I do think it adds a little cute embellishment to it. I flip the sign over and I'm just taking this orange happy fall sign and I'm going to hot glue it to the front of the pumpkin. And now I'm taking that um, Hawaiian hula skirt raffia stuff and is raffia raffia? Tell me in the comments below how you pronounce it. Anyway, so I'm just taking it. I'm going to tie, take three strands and tie a simple bow on one side, flip it over, and I, I tied the three strands on the other side. So it's just kind of all, a lot of raffia going on at the top there. 
I needed a base for the sign and I have not seen these at Dollar Tree in forever and a day. These came from my stash, but I don't know, like a year ago or so, Dollar Tree would have the tower tumbling blocks and as you can see, they'd be a brown color and then the natural wood color. So I'm just going to take the brown ones since they're already painted and I'm going to use that to make the base for this sign. To create the base, I'm putting just like a little bit of wood glue and hot glue on the end of a tower tumbling block and I'm gluing those together. I'm going to do two sets of three end to end like that. And then I'm going to do another set where it's two together and to end three of them. I hope that that doesn't make sense. You, you're going to kind of see what I did in a second. <laughs> I started out by gluing that set of three end to end to the sign. And then it just didn't feel that stable. So I created two more rows of the end to end three of them and I glued them together. <laughs> I'm not explaining this very well and I don't think I have a picture of how I did that but I I made a base of so it was essentially it was two like a pair glued long ways like two of the two of those three two of those things like right there that I got my hand glued side by side that put that on the bottom and it made it a little bit more stable anyway you do you but that's how I did it and I'm sorry I didn't show you better how I actually did it. But this is how one side turned out. This is the Happy Fall orange side. As you can see, I added some Spanish moss to the bottom. That stuff is really very messy. Anyway, they also had some potpourri. I think I got this last year from Dollar Tree. It still smells y'all, but um, I just thought it'd be cute to kind of add some like little, you know, like pine cones in there. And those little prickly things, those are actually from Hobby Lobby. So that's how that side turned out. And here's the other side. I do think adding that black paint helped that little square pop a little bit more so it didn't just look all one dimensional. And then, you know, a little Spanish moss and that potpourri stuff at the bottom. I think it turned out really, really cute. These are double-sided signs. So I'm just taking some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I think plaster is a warmer color than just the white. The white's just a little too stark for me. So I'm just giving it a coat of paint on one side. We're gonna be making buffalo check, y'all. So I put, um, look at me trying to measure like that's really gonna. <laughs> anyway, so I put a line of painter's tape down and I'm using a little piece of painter's tape as a spacer and I'm just doing horizontal lines like that. I'm going to take Waverly chalk paint in the color moss and it's not, it's celery. Anyways, I'm going to paint that. And before it dries, I'm going to start peeling back that painter's tape and those lines look crisp, y'all. Look, here we go again. Another one. Crisp lines. What? another one and the last one so now i'm going to do this horizontally of course i didn't need to wait until the paint was dry and i'm using that little piece of painter's tape as a spacer again and just putting the lines horizontally now before this before you do anything you're going to go back in and mark where you painted before and put an x on the like squares that you didn't paint. Then you're gonna go in and paint. Using those lines and the X's that we just marked as a guide, I'm gonna paint over this. Now this is where you could actually use the third color. Um, you paint a base color, then use a lighter, co uh, you know, dark color, then use your darkest color here. I'm not doing that, I'm just using the same color because that's the look I'm going for. And then before it dries, I like to go ahead and pull off the tape because I don't want anything drying and sticking together. And then you risk pulling off paint and stuff like that. So just very carefully pull off your painter's tape. Now, we're flipped it over, okay? Don't get confused. I'm not redoing the buffalo check. I'm doing a different little painting job here. And I'm just marking off where I, you know, 
so that my paint doesn't get everywhere. And I'm taking that Waverly Moss color again and or maybe is that the darker color? No, that must be the that's the celery. <laughs> that's Waverly Moss Waverly chalk paint in the color celery painting the bottom and then I'm going to paint the top with Rust-Oleum's chalk ultramat paint in the color charcoal. I haven't used that in a long time. It's actually one of my favorites. And of course, I do pull off the tape before it's dry because I don't like anything setting and therefore, you know, possibly pulling up paint. So now I'm taking that same painter's tape that I marked off before and I'm putting it along the edge because I'm going to take Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I'm going to paint that on in the middle. And then I'll use a damp cloth to kind of wipe off the excess. Now I have two wood signs, little wood words, I guess, and they both say hello fall. And for one of them, I'm going to be painting them the color terracotta. And the other one is going to be the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Y'all, I haven't used jute twine in a hot minute. And here we go. My second video, um, recent video using jute twine. So I'm going along the edge and I do have a detailed hot glue gun. That's the kind that I always use. So I'm just doing a little thin bead of the hot glue, working small sections at a time because I don't want the glue to dry. And I'm going around and I'm just pressing that jute twine all along the edge. And when I get to the top, I'm just going to hot glue around that jute twine and wrap it around and hot glue as I go. When I get to the very end, I start fraying. Um, well, it's not the very end, but anyway, I get to the end and I start fraying and taking apart the strands of the jute twine. And then I'm going to kind of add a little bit of hot glue, very carefully try to twist them together. I don't show you this part, so that's why I'm explaining it, but you'll see what I do in just a second. So that's how my little jute twine stem looks. I kind of got that idea from Sarah from GGB DIY. She did one on a mini pumpkin, and I liked the idea because I thought it looked kind of like a stem would look. Then I'm taking the plaster the one, the Hello Fall that I painted in the plaster Waverly chalk paint, and I'm going to be hot gluing that to the bottom right of this little sign. And I flip that sign over, and I'm taking the orange, or actually terracotta, Hello Fall words, and I'm hot gluing them in the middle. Kind of think I should have done it in the corner again, but. They're in the middle. And here's where I got on the struggle bus, y'all. I was trying to make like a little bow to go to the top with some flowers. And so I don't, I just, ugh, I don't know. It was just not coming together that easily for me. So I ended up getting a small piece of craft stick and I start gluing, trying to glue all of that to the little craft stick thing. And then I ended up making this little awareness ribbon, a little bow. So you can see me. I'm trying to glue everything to these, this little popsicle stick thing. That didn't work super great. And, but you know, I mean, it worked or it ended up working okay. It was a struggle bus, y'all. <laughs> I don't even know what to tell y'all. You're probably watching this going, no, don't do it that way. But that's the way I did it. And so this is how it looks. And the idea is I would, um, why is this not a video? I don't know. Um, oh, here's my random video. So the idea is I would put a Velcro, piece of Velcro at the top. And then that way I can put it on one side. And if I want to use the other side, I just flip it over and I can put the little bow thing on the other side. And as you can see, I put a little raffia bow situation in the middle there and here's another look at that other one the hello fall in this one it just kind of like blends in you don't see it nothing's making it stand out wow the camera <laughs> who's the cameraman on this one so the the hello falls just not standing out enough for me so 
I don't know, any ideas on how to fix that or what you would do differently, let me know in the comments below. It just nothing, it, nothing came to my mind when I created it. This wood round circle came from Dollar Tree, but I'm actually gonna be using the back. If you don't have this sign, you can use another wood round sign or you could really use just any shape you want. You're just gonna to have to modify how you lay things out. And I'm painting it with folk art paint in the color linen. These beautiful rub-on transfers came from Dollar Tree as well, and I'm just laying them out to kind of see how they're gonna look best. I did accidentally lay one on the rub-on transfers on top of another, so it kind of messed it up, but you know, I was careful with the rest of them. And I had two packages, and I used one package completely, and then a few from the other package. And it also has some leaves in there, so I used those to kind of fill in some of the spaces. And I just cut around each little piece, placed it on the wood round where I wanted it, and then I used a scraper tool to kind of transfer it on. You can use your, like a craft stick or whatever, you can use your fingernail for, you know, if you want to. But again, just laying them out how I want to and rubbing them on. Here's how it's looking so far, and I just love the subtleness of it. I love the colors in these transfers. I just think they look so pretty. I got this wood word in a mystery box for my friend Tammy from the Rusted Willow, and I knew it would be perfect for the sign, so I painted it with Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. I used Dollar Tree wood glue to attach the word to the sign, and that's it. I thought about adding a bow to the sign, but I'm actually going to be putting this in a wreath so that it will kind of frame it out, and I'll see if it needs a bow then. But for now, I love the simplicity of it, and I love the colors. Here is the inspo for our next project. I got this square sign at Dollar Tree. And the funny thing about Dollar Tree is not all the Dollar Trees have the same stuff. And then you have to run around to like six or seven ones to find the good stuff. And luckily I live close to a bunch of different ones, but I mean, come on Dollar Tree, <laughs> gas ain't cheap. But anyways, I'm painting the inside of this sign with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And I know a lot of people use spackle, but I'm using some joint compound to fill in the holes at the top of the sign. And I'm just trying to press it in and kind of smooth it over. I did use some painter's tape on the back of the holes so that the joint compound wouldn't just ooze through the back. Like, well, there's a word for you, ooze. It's kind of like using the word moist. I mean, it just sounds gross. <laughs> Anyways, um, once that is dry, I'm just taping off the inside so I can paint the frame. Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color charcoal is what I'm using for this project. Before it is completely dry, I'm pulling back the painter's tape and I've used some painter's tape to block off the middle area and I'm using a much thinner washi tape to create some areas that will be lines on my project. I'm painting it with Waverly chalk paint in the color celery. And once that paint is dry, <laughs> there's, it's a little harder to tell, but I'm taking a strip of washi tape, like a really thin strip, and I'm placing it kind of halfway on the celery color I just painted. And then I'm adding another strip of the washi tape to create another line or, you know, basically I'm creating an area to paint. And I paint it with terracotta paint and pull the tape up while it's still wet, of course. I did cut out the words using my Cricut, but you absolutely could trace them on and then paint them and get a similar effect. I'm just adding the decals to my favorite paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. One of the best things about the paper transfer tape is that it doesn't lift off paint from your project. And I found that a lot of the other transfer tapes are just too sticky. This one works great though. Anyways, I'm over here just measuring and adding the decals to the project. I love the simplicity of this project and I think it turned out great, but let's talk about numbers. The original price of this is a whopping $64.99 and I don't know why because on the website it says it's 17.7 by 17.7. .7. So seems kind of spendy in my opinion, but what do I know? <laughs> so mine, I think is an eight by five, 8.5 by 8.5. So that is half the size, but y'all, the sign was $1.25. And even if I guess, and I say I spent a quarter on vinyl, it still only cost me $1.50. Save 97% if you do what I did. And I think mine turned out really cute. For this DIY, I take a pumpkin shape from the Dollar Tree. Mine had slats in it, but if you can't find this one, you can just tape off the sections to paint it. And I paint the outer two sections with folk art paint in the color. Well, actually, I think it's orange, but maybe it's pumpkin. <laughs> I'm not sure. I picked up a beautiful teal throw blanket from Target in their dollar spot, and that inspired me to choose this teal color called Moody Blue from Deco Art that I'm painting in the middle section. And for the remaining two sections, I'm painting those with folk art paint in the color Vintage White. I painted this wood word that says Grateful with Apple Barrel paint in the color black, 
but I felt it was too dark for the sign. So I took some Anita's all-purpose acrylic paint in the color Espresso Bean, and I went over it, but it was still too dark. Also, Captain's helping me. <laughs> I pulled out my folk art matte paint in the color mushroom and I think that lightened it up enough so we just went with that and I say we because Captain is still helping me <laughs> now it's time to make the bow and y'all I've watched tons of people make bows I practice making bows and I still feel like my bows are just you know okay so for today's attempt I'm taking some burlap wire ribbon and I'm making a loop with one piece and with another piece I'm just kind of cinching it in the middle and tying it with some jute twine and this is going to be the tails to my bow. So I stapled that to the sign and because the sign is so thin it pokes out of the bag so I have to take my hammer and kind of bend down the ends of the staple back so that they aren't so pokey you know and then I take the loop and I pinch it in the middle and um, I use some jute twine to hold it together and I hot glue that to the middle and I also staple it down and again I have to press down the staples so they don't poke through too much. I added some lamb's ear and I used some Dollar Tree wood glue to glue down the wood word and this is how this adorable sign turned out. Super cute and pretty easy to make. You can customize the colors to fit your decor and you can always hand letter on whatever word you know suits your fancy. So. I love how this one turned out. Here's the last inspo for today's projects. Spoiler alert, DIY number three turns out really good. <laughs> really pretty good. I got this little sign last year at Hobby Lobby and it was 90% off so it only cost me 40 cents. And I took off the hardware from the back and of course I saved it because you never know, I might need it for a future project. I painted the inside because I didn't need a 4th of July sign for this and I painted it with Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and it did take a couple of coats to cover the words. And I wanted to show you Hobby Lobby has their fall on sale right now for 50% off and you can get some similar really cute signs for not too much money. Yeah, that's cute. That's cute. They have different colors. It's cute. This plaid print is from Hobby Lobby and I got it on sale and I'm just cutting it down to fit inside the sign. And if you couldn't find the plaid paper, you could use really anything, any type of print paper you want, or you could use fabric and they have some really great options to choose from. I just used a Dollar Tree glue stick to put the paper in the sign, but you could also use Mod Podge or something like that as well. And I found this cute little sign at Target the Target dollar spot and I was going to use that but I didn't want to add it to the little sign and I already already had that and um, I didn't want to make a frame for it so I went back to my original plan but I wanted y'all to kind of see my thought process behind choosing what I do for a project. I designed this little print in Canva and printed it out on tissue paper and if you want to try this all you have to do is take a piece of cardstock and tape the tissue paper to it and then run it through your printer like regular. I will have a link to a free graphic that I made for y'all in my description box in case y'all are wanting to try to do it. And I'm just taking a really thin coat of Mod Podge and an even coat and laying the tissue paper on top and then pressing gently and just pushing out little wrinkles. Gently though. Now I started to paint the beads using the masking tape method and that's where you put a piece of masking tape sticky side up so that it holds the beads. But it wasn't really working out that great so I put them on a skewer and I finished staining them with Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I felt that they looked way too dark for the frames of the pictures so I went back in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and after that dried I took my finger sander and I distressed them just a bit. And because the frames weren't exactly matchy matchy the same color I took some more of the plaster color and dry brushed around the frame. I strung the bead onto the beads onto some twine and then I attached it to the sign. And I made a tassel by wrapping the twine around my hand around 20 times and then I took another piece of the twine and tied it near the top to create the tassel head. And then I cut the bottom loops and then you know cut the, the bottoms of the tassel to even them out. Kind of gave it a haircut. And I tied a couple of knots to secure the bead strand on the back. And then I hot glued that little sign to the bigger sign. Y'all, I really like how this one turned out, but let's see how much this one cost me versus the Kirkland's one. With an original price of $49.99, you're going to save about 90% if you use mostly Dollar Tree items. The largest sign that I bought was $1.25. The smaller sign was $0.40 cents from Hobby Lobby on clearance. 
The beads you can get at Dollar Tree for $1.25. The paper was 30 cents on sale at Hobby Lobby. And if you bought some twine and added in some change for the graphic I printed, you're gonna spend around $4.50. So not too bad for a super cute decor piece. This cute little fox sign came from Dollar Tree. I was in the Pacific Northwest visiting my kids and my grandkids. And of course, I stopped by Dollar Tree because you never know what you're gonna find. Different Dollar Trees have different things in them, so it's always fun to look. And you can see the tailpiece broke off. So I use, I sand that area, and then I use a small craft stick as a brace. And with some Dollar Tree wood glue, I glue it back together. And I put some painter's tape on it to hold it and let it dry overnight. This blank sign came from Dollar Tree and I have taped it the sides so that it doesn't get paint on it when I'm painting the sign with folk art paint in the color linen. Because I can get messy when I paint, <laughs> so I gotta be careful. This stencil is new at Dollar Tree and I thought I'd test it out. I had seen Brenda from the Rustic and Lace uh, DIY channel use it, so I kind of had a heads up on how flimsy it would be. And there wasn't really a way to tape it down on all sides, so I just taped one side. And then I used that vintage white color and a sponge dauber brush from Dollar Tree to kind of bounce up and down on the stencil. I do that to kind of help it from bleeding. I then dabbed on some folk art paint in the color linen, and there were some parts of the stencil that were pretty delicate, so I had to be careful because I couldn't tape it all the way around. I kind of had to use my fingers to hold stuff in place, and for the most part it turned out, but there were some splotchy pieces. I did need it to cover the whole area of the sign, so I had to try and put it on the other side, but make sure that it wasn't upside down and that I didn't, you know, mess up or smear the side I had already completed. I had used my heat gun to dry that stenciled side, but I laid down a piece of paper to cover that part anyway, and I started stenciling the other side. And that actually worked out okay, so on to the next step. The fox's tail had dried overnight, so it was ready to paint. And for this part, I guess I needed <laughs> either company or supervision, so Captain was on hand to help. And I painted the top part of the fox with Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And I meant to leave his ears unpainted, but I'll fix that later. And then I painted the rest of the fox, leaving the tail and his chest area unpainted. Because they're not going to be that same color. <laughs> I painted the areas that were unpainted with the color vintage white. And I used that same color to define the ear area. And I did that same thing where I used the three colors. I used black, nutmeg brown, and espresso bean for the nose, the eyes, feet, and the tip of the tail. So you can kind of see where there's more than one color. I mean, I think you can kind of see that there's two, at least two colors, yeah? No, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I touch up with some pumpkin paint and define the chest area a little bit more. I painted these wood Hello Autumn words with that moody blue color. And now that I'm looking back on it, I think I'm gonna go back with maybe that espresso bean color and paint the word autumn with that so you can kind of like see the definition between the words better. I don't know. And that's how the stencil turned out. Overall, it was fine. There were a couple splotchy parts, but you know, it worked pretty good. But I wanted to show y'all how the stencil looked the next day. It's, it's not really reusable. <laughs> so just keep that in mind if you buy these. They had several different options at the store I went to. And these are cute, but it seems like they're going to be like a one and done type thing. I'm going to attach the fox to the frame with some wood glue. And I did put a little cube, wood cube under the tail to kind of hold it up. Since it wasn't really touching the other side of the frame and I didn't want it to break again. And I attached the wood words with wood glue and a couple dabs of hot glue, placing it in the top right corner. And this is how my project turned out. I didn't add any other embellishments because this is another sign going in one of my wreaths, but I think it turned out adorable. DIY number two coming at ya. I'm taking this little pumpkin wood shape that I got in a pack from Dollar Tree and I'm painting it with folk art paint in the color linen. I then took two different sizes of washi tape and marked off the pumpkin to make stripes. And I did vary the size of the stripes as well as the tape to add interest. And I painted them with folk art paint in the color mushroom. And I peeled off the tape before it was dry. Here we go, there we go. <laughs> and I used my heat tool to dry everything. And see me using my heat tool? I then took the washi tape and marked it off the same, but in the opposite direction. So put it down the same way, but just going the other way. Before I painted it again, I marked up where the original tape was so I'd know where to place that tape back on. And I was going to go for a buffalo check type look. I used my heat tool again. I've got it linked below if you want to check it out. It comes in handy, but you could always use a blow dryer or just wait for it to dry naturally. Then I put the original tape back on using the markings as a guide. And then I painted it again with the mushroom color and peeled it off before it dried. 
I wanted to add that moody blue color that I've been just really crushing on lately. So I used a ruler to mark, mark off some lines. I took a paintbrush and then kind of freehanded painting the lines using the ones that I penciled in as a guide. And this floral piece was left over from another project last year. So I'm just adding that to the top to kind of jazz it up. And I wanted this to stand up on its own. So I'm using a tower tumbling block to hold it up and just hot glue it in place. Y'all, this didn't even cost me a dollar to make because the pumpkin was part of a package and probably cost me like 25 cents. The floral was part of a larger floral bunch. So just say like a quarter for that too. And I'm going to use this as a filler on my tear tray. And I think it looks so cute. This is a great way to use those corks for a fun project. I started by gluing two together, a set of three together, and another set of two. And then I glued one of the sets of two on top of the set of three and the other set on the bottom of that set of three. To finish this off, I glued a twig to the top for the stem. I added some, uh, added a green pick, a leaf from a green pick that I had on hand, and I added some Spanish moss. I painted one side of the pumpkins orange. I guess I could have painted both sides and maybe I'll go back and do that. I don't know, but that's it. I love these and you can actually make these a lot larger if you'd like, but these are the perfect size for me to add to my tear tray. It's hard to come up with a price since the wine corks, the Spanish moss, paint twigs, and the green leaves were all things that I had on hand in my stash, but these were definitely less than $5 though. The first project is more like a refresh. I got this sign from Dollar Tree and I just popped the helmet piece right off and then I made sure that my pumpkin shape would fit. Next I took some distressing ink and with my little sponge applicator thingy that I got from Hobby Lobby, I went around the edges of the pumpkin and then also created some lines on the inside of the pumpkin to give it more definition. I then took some rub-on transfers that I got from Dollar Tree and chose the word thankful to put on the pumpkin. You need to be careful when cutting out the transfer because all of the words are so close together and you just don't want to accidentally cut something that you could use in a future project. I placed the word on the pumpkin about where I think it was going to go. And then I started working on the embellishments on the stem. I add a green leaf first that I just cut from an extra pick that I had on hand and I added a jute twine bow. Everything is looking good so far. So I'm going to start working on the rub on transfer. And when you do rub on transfers, you just need to be careful not to lift it too soon. Um, just in case it didn't all transfer over, then you can easily lay it back down and rub some more. The last step is just to glue the pumpkin to the sign, and that's it. I was lucky that the backing of this sign coordinated with my theme today. If it didn't though, you can fix that easily enough by either painting it or maybe gluing down some craft paper. It's such a quick and easy craft that it'll look cute on a tear tray or anywhere in your home. The sign cost me a dollar and I had the pumpkin shape already, but those come in a pack of five or six for a dollar at Dollar Tree and the embellishments were just scraps that I had on hand. So the total cost for this project was about $2. So you see my cats in a lot of my videos and this one that you see the most is Captain. He's definitely a mama's boy, but when mama is ready to craft, it's time for you to move out the way, buddy. And I'm not sure why I had this random old wine glass on hand, but I decided to upcycle it into a candle holder. So I painted the stem of it or what's going to be the stem of it green and I painted the rest of it orange. I got these dollar napkins from the Dollar Tree and I cut out that little print and I tried to do what folks call like fussy cutting, which just means that you're trying to get detailed with all of your cutting out. I let the glass dry, the paint dry, but I accidentally touched part of it and I made a mark, but it's okay because we're going to cover it up with the next part. 
I took some Mod Podge and put that on the glass in the area that I was going to put the napkin. And then I added some to the back of the napkin. And then I carefully placed the napkin onto the glass and gently pushed it down. Just be careful with this part because if you have thinner or like less sturdy napkin, it could tear. I let it all dry and I embellished it with some raffia, AKA the hula hoop skirt from Dollar Tree. And I set my candle on it and that's it. You could go to like an estate sale or a garage sale, thrift store or something like that and find all kinds of sizes um, of glasses to make these like this project. And then you can make it like a centerpiece, like paint maybe some of them like pumpkins, Mod Podge on other ones. I think it would be super cute. Did you know that you can make faux chicken wire from a wire Dollar Tree wastebasket? I've seen several DIYers do this, so I thought I'd give it a try. The first step is to use a wire snipper or a pair of scissors, not your best pair of course, and separate the wire from the rims. The idea that for this project came from the very talented Holly from Hot and Humble Pie. She also has a faux chicken wire tutorial that you'll enjoy too. I'll link her channel below. I'm just cutting the wire down to the shape of the frame and initially I was using wire snippers but my scissors really proved to be a lot easier so that's how I finished it. And since the waste basket is white, I took some black, brown, and orange paint to try and create a rusted old wire look. And I'm taking my chippy brush and just kind of dabbing it all over. Taking a cue from how Holly did it, I'm gluing on a popsicle stick first. Around that frame there, you can see. And then I'm adding the wire and a good amount of hot glue and then another popsicle stick on top. So essentially the wire is being sandwiched in between. I then decide to darken up my frame with some Waverly wax in the color antique, just kind of lightly rubbing it on. I cut some Dollar Tree little mini styrofoam pumpkins in half and I recommend using a knife with like a serrated edge. It'll be easier overall. I was struggling to cut these with a regular kitchen knife and that was just a waste. And now that I'm done with that, I'm adding some Spanish moss to the bottom of this frame and it's time to glue the pumpkins to the moss. I'm going to use the word gather on a little mini sign. I always try to cut out my rub on transfers first, but I suppose you could just rub it on while it's on the sheet. I don't know. Just do what works best for you. I made this little palette type sign out of popsicle sticks and now I'm just dirtying it up a little bit, dirtying it up a little bit with my distressing ink. And I'm attaching the rub on transfer and I'm gluing it to the corner of my little sign. But I feel like it's missing something, so I'm going to add a jute twine bow and a little fall flower to the other corner. I just love Holly's projects and I enjoy all the inspo she gives me. I also really like the fact that I learned how to make faux chicken wire, so I'm sure you'll see it again in some future projects. I love making signs and BB Craft was kind enough to send me some round wood circles. They are also sponsoring today's video. I decided to make a cute little sign for the corner of my porch. I'm about to switch over my decor from what I call the late summer to the fall. Anyways, I'm staining the top and the bottom with Waverly Wax in the color antique and I painted the center orange. I'm not sure what happened to that footage, but the best part's showing right now. It's pulling back that tape. I cut out this decal with my Cricut and I probably sound like a broken record, but seriously, if you don't have a Cricut, don't let that stop you from creating because you could freehand it, trace it, stencil, lots of ways to still create really cute stuff. And now I'm just figuring out how I want to arrange these foliage on the top and a simple bow that I made out of burlap ribbon. 
And this is how it turned out. I really think it's cute. But if I did this one again, I would lower the orange just a little bit. And I, then I would, of course, lower the Hello Pumpkin part of it. So thanks again to BB Crafts for sponsoring today's video. Their information is going to be in the description box below if you'd like to check them out. And don't forget, the playlist is going to be down there. The channels, the host channels, Tammy and Ellie, is going to be down there. So I hope you check it out as well. This wood round is from Dollar Tree, and it has a pumpkin on it and, and some other stuff etched around it. I guess it's leaves and florals, but I really didn't want that. So I took some spackle from Dollar Tree and I filled in all the areas that had the etching and I let it dry overnight and then I sanded it down until it felt, felt smooth. Captain was on the scene for a hot second while I marked off the sections with tape that I was going to paint. And I added a second piece of tape and then painted the top portion with territorial beige. And while that dried, I painted the bottom portion black and carefully, or at least as carefully as I could, painted around that pumpkin. The top portion was dry so I could remove the painter's tape and I moved it up and marked off one stripe so I could paint it with that beautiful moody blue color. Keep in mind y'all, the colors that I'm choosing aren't your thing. If they're not your thing, don't worry. Just pick colors that suit your style and decor and it'll be totally awesome. Now, it's ready to paint that one last section and I've moved the tape and I'm using folk art paint in the color linen to paint that final stripe. And on the raised portion of the pumpkin, I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And I have this wood word that came in a pack and I painted the bottom word with the pumpkin color. And the top word, the word happy, I'm painting with the linen color. And I also painted the inside of the pumpkin with that same linen color. And I decided that the stem of the pumpkin should be brown, so I used two different brown colors to paint it. And I thought polka dots would look fun, so I added some pumpkin colored dots of varying sizes in the pumpkin, and I used the end of a paintbrush to make them. And I felt like it needed a pop of color, so I added some moody blue colored polka dots as well. I made a bow off camera and hot glued that to the center of the sign and I trimmed up the ends and fluffed the bow as needed. I hot glued down the word woodward to the front of the sign. And this is a double sided sign and I felt like it needed some more jazzing up so I just hot glued some twine all the way around the outside of the sign. So this sign turned out so cute and I really liked it. It only cost about $1.75 to make, $1.25 for the sign, maybe a quarter for the word, not even a quarter for the bow and the twine. I mean, that's not too bad. We're already on DIY number four, y'all, and I'll give you a spoiler alert. This one turns out great. And I'm taking this square sign from the Dollar Tree. I taped off the frame and painted the inside with that vintage white color. Y'all making buffalo check is really pretty easy and let me show you how to do it. We already have the base color so I mark off the lines using a small piece of tape as my spacer. And for this project I'm using three paint colors. My lightest color, the vintage white color, is my base. And now that I have the tape down, I then paint the open spaces with that second darker color, linen. I pull off the tape, let the paint dry, or you can dry it with your heat tool, and then I put more tape on going in the opposite direction using that spacer as a guide. Now before painting, I mark where the original tape was, and this makes it easier so that you don't have to guess or mess up your project when you put the original tape back on. So after that's done, paint another layer of the second color, but do not remove the tape. Let it dry. Once that coat is dry, you're going to put the original tape back on using the marks that you made earlier as your guide. And once you've done that, Take your third color, which should be your darkest color, and paint over the open areas. At this point, I go ahead and pull up the tape before it dries, so hopefully the paint won't dry and stick to like the sign and make it hard to remove. And I take three pumpkins from the pack of wood pumpkin shapes that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I paint all of them with the color linen. And I use washi tape to prep the pumpkins for painting, and then I paint pumpkin colored stripes on two of the pumpkins. The third pumpkin I just painted with the pumpkin color. <laughs> and I removed the tape from the other two pumpkins. And I'm leaving one of the striped pumpkins as is and creating a buffalo check pattern for the other. I do the same thing as I did with the previous piece and mark the lines and paint. And once it's dry, I reapply the original 
tape and then I use a terracotta color as my third darker color and I paint all over. And I always pull up that tape right away. Now this part I should have done later because it would have just been easier for me but I'm using some hot glue to add some jute twine around the stem of each pumpkin and then I add some brown curved lines to represent the ribs of the pumpkins and add another brown to give it dimension. And I use my Cricut to create this decal and I use my favorite paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl to transfer it onto the sign. If you don't have a Cricut, you could hand litter it or decoupage something or use a vinyl cling or something. Lots of options. And I used a white paint pen to add some highlights to the pumpkin ribs as well as add some other little embellishments to each of the pumpkins. And I don't think that the It's Fall Y'all was standing out enough, so I outlined it with, with a white paint pen to make it pop more. And now it's time to put it all together. Since the pumpkins were not going to be fully supported in the position I was putting them in, I used cubes to support them. And wow, I love how this one turned out. It looks super cute and will fit right in with my fall decor. This sign cost me $1.25 and the pumpkins were from a pack, so say like 75 cents for them. And the other things were odds and ends left over for her. So for two bucks, I mean, it's a really cute sign. I found this little pumpkin and I quickly removed the tag, jute twine, and the metal leaf. But for the metal leaf, <laughs> I did have to get the pliers out to do that part. It wouldn't, it just didn't pull out very easily, but that's okay. Now this is going to shock you, or at least shocked me, but all of the paper came off this pumpkin so easily. I didn't have to wet it. I didn't have to use a rag or anything. It just all kind of came off. I don't know. Christmas miracle. Here are the three colors that I'm using, and you're going to start off with a base coat of your lightest color, and I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I always have to be careful of Captain getting in the way. But once that paint is dry, I'm taking a small piece of painter's tape and I'm using it as a spacer. I'll add additional strips of the painter's tape horizontally and then I just continue to use that small piece of painter's tape as a spacer and add additional strips. Next, take your darker color and in this case I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and paint over the open spaces, you know, where the tape isn't. Before the paint dries, remove the pieces of tape, but keep the tape because you're going to need it again in just a second. Pulling off the tape up and revealing that crisp line, it's like literally one of my favorite things. <laughs> um, we're going to repeat the process of putting the tape down, but in the opposite direction. And I turn my pumpkin on the side because I, I just think it makes it easier to put the tape line straight. But just remember to use that small piece of tape as your spacer and make sure to press the tape firmly down. And here's a great tip, a Lisa lesson, if you will. Mark where the lines are. You can see what I'm doing here. And I'm placing lines on each side of the paint line and then putting an X on the area that didn't get previously painted. Just trust me on this. This is going to help you. But you can kind of see how I'm just kind of carefully trying to put them as exactly as I can. Taking that same color you just used, and in my case, it's that elephant color, you're going to paint over all the open areas. And this time, we're going to leave those strips of painter's tape on. And after it's dry, you're going to add back in those other strips of painter's tape that I told you to keep, because this is why you're hanging on to them, <laughs> because we're using them. Now, use those lines and the X's that you wrote earlier as your guide so you can tell where to put the tape back on. Now take your darkest color and for this project I'm using Home Deco chalk paint in the color Intense. No, it's rich black. <laughs> it is an intense color. Anyways, after you've done that carefully, and I mean carefully, because you don't want to mess that up this late in the game, remove all of the tape and then you're just going to touch up as needed. And as you can see, I did have a couple spots that I needed to touch up. Looks like we have both supervisors on duty for this part. Um, this tree awards came from Dollar Tree and they're metal. And I've seen other videos where they have other variations now in the stores, but I had these on hand from last year in my stash. And of course, I'm using the word thankful. Because it's metal, I was concerned about the paint. Like I, I thought it would slip off or something. So I'm taking my finger sander and roughing it up a bit. And then I'm adding a layer of Mod Podge to hopefully give it some extra grip. And I was trying two different colors and I ended up using the terracotta color and I'm using a sponge applicator. I got it from Dollar Tree just to kind of paint it on. I'm more kind of like dabbing up and down, almost like a stencil, I guess. 
and then I'm removing the stem that was there. I'm cutting that off because I wanted to add something that looked more like the inspo piece. So I used my little scraper thing to kind of score it and then I cut it off with some scissors. But don't use your good scissors. This is part of a branch that I got out in nature. I actually don't have any trees right now on my property so I had to go on a scavenger hunt to find what I needed. And I had cut a slit but it wasn't wide enough. And I thought I better add the word thankful on the front before I mess with the stem because once I put that stem on it won't lay flat. And I used my handy dandy miter saw to cut a bigger slat or slot I guess and then I used some hot glue to attach it to the pumpkin. Instead of raffia I'm using that hula skirt and you know, I keep wanting to call it a hula hoop skirt but anyways it's not that it's just a hula skirt and I use that to make the bow at the top. Y'all, this really turned out so, so good, but let's talk numbers. Kirkland's original piece was $16.99. I bought the pumpkin for $1.25. The hula skirt, which you can use multiple times, was $1.25. The metal words, which I have two left over, were $1.25 for a grand total of $3.75. So you would save about 78% making it yourself. Okay, so I'm not counting paint though, or hot glue because I have those on hand all the time. I always have those. And then of course I'm not counting the stem because that came from nature. So 375, it's a pretty good deal. Tell me what you think in the comments below. This video is primarily Dollar Tree stuff, but I did get this little decor set from Target Dollar Spot. It was on clearance, so I'm sure I only paid like a dollar or two for it. But anyway, I gave this two good coats of folk art paint in the color vintage white. Now this rub on transfer did come from Dollar Tree. And when I place it on the wood piece, I don't remove the backing. I just put it where I like it and then I hold it down and cut off half of the backing and then press that side down. And then I remove the other half of the backing. And that kind of helps keep it in place where you want it without it accidentally sticking in the wrong spot. And then just use a craft stick or something like that to rub the transfer on. And I just pointed out where you can see that the transfer is transferring. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can actually tell, but it starts to lighten up or look a little bit grayish. Now just continue to rub it and to see if it's finished, hold down the transfer sheet and start to pull up one of the corners of the sheet. And if you see any of the image on the sheet, then just place it back down and continue to rub. It doesn't always turn grayish. So that is just another way that you can check. Gently pull up the sheet when it's all done. And I chose to seal mine with a layer of Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge, because I don't really like the shiny stuff as much. <laughs> This turned out so cute y'all and it was so easy to make too. This cost me about $2.25 to make. $1.25 for the rub on transfer and maybe a dollar for the wood piece. So it just goes to show that you can make some really cute decor on a budget. I have three cubes that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just giving them a quick coat of paint. And I have two pieces of craft paper that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to measure them and cut them down a bit smaller than the size of the cube. Supervisor Captain is now on duty, and he's just watching me give one side of the cube a coat of Mod Podge. And I'm placing one of the pieces of paper on the cube, and as you can see, it is smaller than the cube. I carefully apply some Mod Podge to the top. And I guess Captain thought I was doing a good enough job because he left. And I'm just doing the same to the second cube, applying Mod Podge, applying the craft paper, and applying another coat of Mod Podge. And now it's time to distress these pumpkins just a bit. I'm using my distressing ink and a little sponge dauber that I got from Hobby Lobby to add some color. And I also have my laptop out, <laughs> laptop out because I'm listening to a Zoom call, multitasking. And I'm using twigs from a tree as my stems and I'm just gluing them to the center of the top of the cubes. And of course I'm using that hula skirt raffia that to add some embellishments to the top of the pumpkin. And I don't know, have I convinced you to buy one yet? Because these are so easy to work with and you get so much for only a dollar. And I love how these turned out. They look great as a trio or even just as standalone pumpkins. I started off by painting this scrap piece of wood with Waverly Wax in the color Antique and then I wiped off the excess. Now this is the part where we got on the struggle bus. I wasn't entirely sure how to attach the wire pumpkin wreath forms to the block of wood, which is going to be the base of the centerpiece that I'm making. And so I first tried hot glue and that didn't work. So I ended up using zip ties to attach it. But y'all, the struggle was real. 
after I got it attached, it was not super stable. So I probably needed to attach a larger piece of wood to the bottom, but so far it's working out fine. Next, I put down a layer of those fall leaves that I got from Dollar Tree. And then I hot glued down some green floral foam. This next part is what I call fill the middle with a lot of flowers because that's what I did. I'm sure that there's a better way to do it, but I was just filling it until it looked full to me. I added some green, I added some green leaves to the stem and then I wrapped the stem with some brown burlap that I got from Dollar Tree. And y'all, I think it turned out pretty cute. I'm thinking of either adding like a small pillar candle in the middle or maybe adding some twinkle lights. I don't know. What do you guys think? You let me know in the comments below. I purchased some wood tree slices from Hobby Lobby for project number two. And I chose three pieces out of the pack, one large and two slightly smaller. For the two smaller pieces, as you can see here, I'm painting them using terracotta chalkboard paint. Fun fact, there are wood tree slices in two places at Hobby Lobby, in the his and hers wedding section and then also in the wood craft section. They don't seem to go on sale much in the wood section area, but they regularly do 50% off in the his and hers wedding area, so I got these for 50% off. I chose the largest wood slice in the pack and cut out some fall craft paper to fit it just inside the wood slice. So you, you know, you see what I'm doing. As you can see, both supervisors are on duty to make sure I do it right. And I attached it using Mod Podge and I had a little bit too much on the wood slice. So I used that Mod Podge on top of the craft paper. And then I scraped off the excess and set it aside to dry. I had yet another piece of scrap wood and I used hot glue to attach them together so it would be able to stand. And oh, well, there's Captain's tail. Anyway, I used that scrap piece of wood to act as a stand. And once all of that was done, <laughs> I attached twigs to the top of each of the pumpkins to, you know, be like the stems. And I purchased this hula skirt from the Dollar Tree back in probably the, the spring. And I use that instead of raffia because I feel like it's neater and it's easier to work with. I use some stems, some strands to tie around the stems. And then I added a jute, a simple jute twine bow on top of that. I then glued each of the smaller wood slices to the bigger wood slice to form a trio of pumpkins. I trimmed up the raffia and the twine to finish it off. This fall decor piece was simple and easy to make and you can make it any size you'd like. It just depends on the size wood slices you have. I chose orange for the outside pumpkins, but you really could go with any color that fits your fall decor theme. I took this little mini wood pumpkin that I found at the Dollar Tree. I am painting it with Waverly Wax in the color antique on the bottom half and then wiping off the excess. Just a little note, I'm trying to do a dupe version, mini version of a piece I saw at Kirkland's and didn't realize that the top half was brown, so mine is kind of reversed, but anyways. I used some painter's tape to create a crisp line and I'm painting on Rust-Oleum's chalk alternate paint in the color linen. Now the part that everyone loves, peeling back of the tape. And yeah, I did it in slow-mo. <laughs> I'm using a decal that I cut out from my Cricut, but honestly, this is super easy to freehand. And they even have stickers at the Dollar Tree that you can use in place of a Cricut decal. And I'm just wrapping the stem with a bit of twine that was actually a piece left over from another sign. And of course, Captain is helping. And now I'm attaching a tower tumbling block to the back to help it stand. This little piece turned out really cute. And even though I flipped the colors, the brown is supposed to be on top and the white's on the bottom, but it, it looks, so it doesn't look exactly like the Dirk Kirkland's dupe, but or it's not a Kirkland's dupe because of that. But anyway, it still looks awesome and it'll look awesome on a tear tray. For DIY number two, I'm gonna show you how to make a no-sew pillow. I got this zipper from Hobby Lobby and 
I have these two placemats from Dollar Tree. That liquid stitch is from Hobby Lobby. And all you have to do is just, Captain's helping. <laughs> all you have to do is just put a line of liquid stitch down and put the placemat on each side of it like that. Like you see me doing there. And you're gonna kind of let that dry a little bit before you like start tugging on it or anything. Now I'm tucking down the little ends of the zipper. You can cut them, but I'm going to show you in a second what happens. On this particular pillow, I did not cut them and I'm just using some Dollar Tree clamps to hold it down. And then as you see, you're going to run a bead of glue down and you're going to press the placemats together. I'm using clamps because again, you want it to stay together, but you don't want it to be glued to anything else. So I use these silicone clamps and they work wonderfully to do this. I think I mentioned, I got it from this zipper from Hobby Lobby. It's $2.99, I think. And here you see me cutting off the ends. You can use, not your good scissors, but you can use scissors to do that. And here I'm trying to use all that liquid stitch that I can. And again, I'm just gluing down one end of the placemat to one side and I'll glue the placemat end to the other side. You see what I'm doing there. And as you can see, I put glue all the way around and then I'm, Captain, get out the way. <laughs> then I'm gonna just lay the placemats together, trying to make sure that they're all even and use my clamps to secure them in place while they dry. To finish it out, I'm, you just have to stuff it. I'm using some stuffing from an old pillow that had a hole in it and no sense in throwing it out when I can use the stuffing for something else. And the nice thing about this type of pillow is it zips so you can remove the stuffing and store it and not be storing a bulky pillow. Now here's where I messed up. I had cut the end of the zipper, the bottom of the zipper, and I didn't give myself a little bit of room to kind of tuck it in and glue it. And so I even had Marvin helping me, Captain tries to help. I, we, we finally got it back on, but I'm just telling you, be careful. <laughs> and this is how they turned out. And again, the thing that I love most about this, aside from the fact that it was super easy and you didn't even need to sew a thing, is the fact that when you go to store it, there's no bulk. You just take out the stuffing and fold it flat, tuck it in your tote box that you have all your fall decor in, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And they turned out so cute too. It's really easy to do. Now there is drying time of course, but super easy to do. I used two Dollar Tree placemats and from Hobby Lobby, I got a zipper and some liquid stitch. Make a line, okay, get out the way, kept it. <laughs> Make a line of liquid stitch on one side of the zipper and then place one edge of the placemat along that line and then do the same for the other side. Liquid stitch down the ends of the zipper and I used Dollar Tree silicone clamps to hold it down. And then make a bead um, of, oh my gosh, Captain, get out the way. <laughs> make a bead of liquid stitch on the other three sides of one placemat and then attach them together, secure as needed and let dry. And after it's dry, stuff the pillow. I'm just using old pillow stuffing and then zip it shut. That's it. Pretty easy and no sewing. Want to make more cute DIYs on a budget? Then follow Our Gray House on YouTube for more. Thank y'all so much for watching my video today and sticking with me through this long video. If you got to the end, leave me a pumpkin emoji and let me know that you're still here. I really do appreciate the support that y'all have given me. I'm almost to 5,000 and I am so excited about that. And I just love sharing my easy DIYs and budget home decor with y'all. And I hope you enjoy it too. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.